I think at this point, we're all pretty well addicted to Pal World, but you know what? That's all right. There's way worse things in life to be addicted to. But if you're like me, you're probably trying to figure out how to get everywhere in the game as fast as possible. So that's what we're going to be covering today. We're going to be going over some of the fastest mounts that you can get in the game, and all of these can be gotten before you get to end game. There are some legendary pals that are pretty amazing and fast that you can get at the end of the game, but there is so much to do in Pal World. You're still going to need a mount to get you through mid to late game, and those are really going to be what we're going over today. Now, not only are we going to be going over all of these different mounts, we're going to be covering their best skills, how to get them, and how to get them early through crossbreeding or other means. Now, the first pal we're going to be talking about today is the Fang Lobe. If you watched my first video on the early game mounts you should be getting, it's going to be very reminiscent of the deer that we covered right here. This thing was absolutely amazing, and Fang Lope is essentially a better version of that. Now, one of the great things about Fang Lope is it does have double jump, and it jumps very, very high. This is going to make traversing the world so much easier. And if you don't like how slow some of the flying mounts are in the game, and you just want to be able to run everywhere as quick as possible, the Fang Lope is definitely going to be the one for you. Like, we can climb freaking mountains. Not only do we have that, but we have the Cloud Tempest ability, which is a massive charge forward, which allows us to travel great distances in one click. And honestly, the timer on it isn't too bad either. And the speed burst that you get for it is phenomenal. Now, there's a couple different things that you can do during this Cloud Tempest. You'll notice as we sprint, we are losing our stamina. But if we use Cloud Tempest and we let go of Shift, we can regen stamina while we're going. But when you let go of Shift during Cloud Tempest, you're not going to move as far as if you actually keep Shift held down. You can compare the distance like this. So if we click and let go of Shift, we're only going to make it to about this tree right here. Now, if we hold shift and use Cloud Tempest, we're going to get substantially farther. So it's really your choice if you want to hold shift while using it or let go of it to rejuvenate stamina. I guess it's really going to depend on where your stamina bar is. Now, there are a couple different ways to be able to get the Fang Lope. If you want the boss version, it is available here, which is just west of the Ascetic Falls. The starting point here is Plateau of Beginnings, and you can kind of just head west across here. It is a level 25 boss fight. The habitat for catching a lot of them is a little bit more complicated. They're kind of in a rough place to be. You need heat resistance. There's high level pals there. Or you can go to the sanctuary at the top right. They are available in both of these locations day or night. But there's also a couple different ways that you can get this much, much sooner. Now, if many of you followed my previous guide, you've probably already been using the Eichthyr Deer. Eichthyr Deer? The Deer Boy! And you might already have great stats on here if you spend some time breeding. Now, if you take your deer and you throw a Robin Quill in there, they're going to actually be able to make a Fang Lobe. And if you're feeling really crazy, you can use the monitoring stand and put them to super hard working, and you can make them breed faster. Look, the video is about trying to get things done faster, right? Just be careful with this because it will make all of your other pals also work much harder, so their sanity is going to drop faster, and if you're not paying attention, you could end up with some really depressed pals. Now the egg they're going to lay is just a regular common egg, and in here is going to be the Fang Lope. Now there are a ton of other combinations, even using some of the lowest level pals in the game. You can also get one by breeding Lift Monk and Pen King together, and Pen King you can get super early from any water egg early in the game, and there are a ton of other combinations. I'll leave a link in the description to my crossbreeding video if you really want to know everything there is to know about breeding and crossbreeding to get different pals and especially different pals early. Now Fang Lope is going to be your go-to ground mount. There really isn't anything better as far as speed goes, but you can really make any ground mount good with the right passive skills. So before we get into the flyers, I want to go over the passive skills you should be focusing on. The main one you're going to want to focus on is Swift for a 30% increased movement speed. Second up is going to be Runner for a 20% increased movement speed. Legend is very, very very important. Once you get to end game, you can tame legendaries and you can pass the legend trait down from a legendary to your favorite pal. So if you want to make something even faster, you're definitely going to want to get the legend trait on there. You also get an attack and defense plus 20%. Now, if you want to go super crazy to stack movement speed, you can also add nimble, which is a 10% increase. There are four legendaries in the game. They're all level 50 boss battles. Now let's talk about the top three flying mounts that you're going to want to be looking for for your mid to late game playthrough. These are the best flying mounts that you can get outside of the legendary pals that you can get at the very end of the game. And these three are pretty amazing. Now there are two legendary pals that you can get from the legendary boss fights that are going to be the fastest flying and ground mounts, but you're still going to need something to help you progress through the game. The first of these three flying mounts is Beacon. This is an electric type flying pal whose saddle unlocks at level 34. So it's going to be the first of the three that you can actually use. 
Now the ride sprint speed on this is 1200, which means it's only slightly slower than the other PALs that we're going to be covering in this video. And by slightly slower, I mean in some instances, it'll be very hard to tell the difference. You have a run speed of 750 and a slow walk speed of 100. We also have 100 melee attack, 115 magic attack, and 80 defense. If you wanna catch one out in the wild, you're going to want to head to the desert biome on the top right corner of the map. This is a level 30 plus zone, and you can find them up there day or night. I think it's a particularly good looking pal. There are quite a few different ways to be able to crossbreed for one of these, but most of them do require pals of its level or higher to be able to hatch it from an egg. So for most instances, you're going to be trying to catch these out in the wild. Currently, the only movement speed I have on mine is runner for a plus 20% movement speed. But even with just that, it is a pretty decent flying mount. The other ones we're going to showcase do have more movement speed buffs on them, so they're going to seem a little bit faster than this. And one tip I recommend when flying is that when you are flying and you're running out of stamina, just let yourself fall to the ground. It's so much faster than actually trying to use the descend button. It's just one of the tricks that I've learned to help kind of get a little bit of an extra distance other than trying to conserve your stamina. Just let yourself follow the sky, regenerate your stamina, and then start flying again. It just helps speed up the process of getting down to the ground rather than using descend. Next up we have Ragnahawk, which is honestly one of my favorite looking flying pals. It does add fire damage to the player's attacks while mounted, just like Beacon adds electric attacks. I do have Legend, Swift, and Runner on this one. I actually just bred this up during one of the live streams, which means we have a total movement speed bonus of 65%. I do have Burly Body on here for some extra defense. I could add Nimble to get us to 75% movement speed. Now I did transfer the Legend passive skill down from one of the legendary pals. So this thing is an absolute monster when it comes to movement speed. Now this one's saddle is unlocked at level 37. If we check out Ragnahot's stats, we can see it has slightly higher ride sprint speed at 1300, which is a hundred more than beacons. We've got a run speed of 800 and a slow walk speed of 100. Now when it comes to melee attack, we have 100 magic attack at 105, and it does have higher defense than Beacon at 120. Now, similar to Beacon, it is going to take similar level pals or higher to be able to crossbreed for this one. So for the most part, it's probably going to be easier to catch them in its habitat, unless you're breeding specifically for stats, unless you're breeding specifically for stats. Now, Ragnahawk's habitat is in the southwest corner in the lava mountain biome, and you can find them there both day and night. This is actually my first time getting to ride this freshly hatched version, and my god, is this thing amazingly fast. It's one of my favorite flying mounts, so this is actually really, really exciting. Because of the stats that I have on here currently, this is faster than everything I have except for one legendary pal, which quite frankly... I don't like using that much anyways. But realistically, as long as you get good passive skills on a pal, you can make anyone in the game viable. So really it's all about your personal preference and just have fun with the game. Now last but certainly not least is a pal you can breed for early, although you can't get the saddle until higher level than the other two. It is the fastest of the three, and it's also pretty awesome looking. It is the Phalaris. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's how I'm gonna pronounce it in this video, so I'm sorry. It's got a really cool Egyptian look. I think Ragnahawk is still my favorite, but this one's pretty cool looking too. The only problem with this pal is it is locked to one of the three endgame islands, if you wanna capture it out in the wild, but I'm gonna be showing you how to actually get it early through crossbreeding. Now this is another fire type pal with a ride sprint speed of 1400, a run speed of 100, and a slow walk speed of 150. Now its melee attack is at 100, its HP is at 100, magic attack at 105, and defense at 110. So this is naturally the fastest of the three flying mounts that we're going over today. Unfortunately, when I look at it from this direction, all I can see is a Thanksgiving turkey, and I really don't know how I feel about that now. It's definitely much better to look at it this way. But as you can see, it is a pretty fast pal, and that's not even fully upgraded with good passive skills. Now to get Phalaris early, you can take a Van Wire, and you can breed it with an Anubis. Now I know what you're thinking. Tag, an Anubis is a level 47 boss. How am I supposed to get that? Oh, I got you. You're gonna get it real easy without even having to fight it. So this is an extra little bonus. This is actually the best pal that you can have in your base for handiwork. This is gonna help you craft everything incredibly fast to get a little bit of a bonus in this video. Now to be able to breed for an Anubis, all you need is one of these beautiful penguins, Pen King, which you can get from any damp egg 
in the entry area of the game. You can tame them down here on this island. You can also get it from the Pen King boss, which is just the northwest of the starting area right here. And there is a fast travel point here called the Sealed Realm of the Frozen Wings. Now you're going to take that Pen King and you're going to breed it with a Bushi. These are actually some pretty cool pals too. And while you would usually find Bushi in a higher level zone, you can actually fight one early at level 23 here as a boss battle. This is just west of the Plateau of Beginnings, so you can follow this around right here, pick up the Sealed Rem of the Swordmaster Fast Travel Point, and you can catch as many Bushi as you need here every day. The bosses do respawn every in-game day. The egg that these two lay are going to hatch an Anubis. These things are absolutely amazing for combat, so you're going to want one on your team anyways, and it's going to help you get one of the best flying mounts in the game early. Now once you get your Anubis, just throw it in a breeding pen with the Van Wyrm and start collecting all of your huge Scorching Eggs. The only downside here is the saddle does unlock at level 38, and it does take refined ingots to be able to make, so it's the most expensive saddle of the three as well. Now, these are all of the fastest mounts you're going to be able to get outside of the endgame legendary pals. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you all in the next one.